you know, you just work hard and you do what you think is best for them. Things happen and... Maybe these chickens have learned their lesson. Nope, they haven't. Here they come. Yeah, float. I pulled out in the pasture and I saw, well just by looking at her, I like to get her up close because. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. We are about to head to the Dunbar herd. We got something very, very exciting to show you guys. I cannot wait to get over there. Uh, Cole is helping me today, so um, we're gonna do that. But first, we are at the U.S. Post Office here in Sulphur. We are getting some packages out to you guys. And if you haven't already, check it out on our website at crosstimmersbicep.com. We're doing a fall clearance sale, and we're getting ready to bring some new stuff in. And also, we've got jerky and sticks back in stock. You guys go check it out at our website. All right, guys, we are at the Dunbar place and uh, we are very excited to go down in the pasture. I can't wait to go down there and show you guys what we have. Huge surprise. Can't believe it. But Cole and I are going to hop in here and we're going to head down there and uh, show you what we got. Alright guys, so we are at the Dunbar place at my mom and Kevin's and Kevin called me yesterday morning and he sent me a video and just there's a lot of good things that happened. Let's just say that. Um, one, it started raining on Sunday. We've been waiting on this for so long. Uh, over 70 days of no rain or less than two tenths rain. And he uh, also sent me this video and I opened it and I was like, oh my gosh, a red dog. We have one red dog and I can't believe it. Um, and so my head just started spinning. I told Marissa, I was like, we've got a red dog, we've got a red dog. And then um, he called me, he said, I wanna send you another video. And at the time he was messing with me, which I didn't know it. And then he turns around and sends me another video. And on the video are three red dogs. Looky here, Baker. You got three new babies. And they was born, I would say, within two days of each other. I thought you had one new one, but you had three. All in one day, a day and a half maybe, we have three new red dogs that have joined the uh, Dunbar herd.
And so, <laughs> wild, crazy thing. I guess it was the front that got him going. I don't know what uh, the rain got him going, but we've got three new babies here unexpectedly. Well, let me go back a little bit. When Cole and I came out here a couple weeks ago to check on the Dunbar herd, I saw Paul and I thought she looked pregnant. And she's right here. And I said that on the video. Grand champion right here in the middle. She had a baby as well. I didn't know if she was pregnant. And then Flo, I also saw Flo and she's got a little bitty baby right over here. And Flo's not that big. But I, I thought that she may be pregnant. And it is late August, almost September. And we've had three, three babies. And uh, I said this before, I'd rather have babies than not have any at all. And so, with everything that's been going on lately, with the questions about Big Joe and his presence as far as this herd when he was here, getting him fertility checked, him coming back positive, the results are, have finally uh, shown themselves. He did his job and um, Dunbar did his job. So, kind of let me explain the, all, all that, how it went. Remember, I took Eleanor and I took Flo and I put them with Dunbar. And then I brought Big Joe down here and put him with the main portion of the herd. And so uh, at the time, Big Joe had seven cows, I believe, and uh, Dunbar had two. So Flo has had her baby. She's had a little bitty baby. And um, I don't know the gender of them yet. So that means Dunbar did his thing with Flo um, and then Big Joe with Quapaw and Big Joe with our grand champion um, heifer right here is what I like to call her. She's, I think she's our most beautiful um, cow. So you got two Quapaws that had their babies and Flo. So, and, and what the crazy thing is, is um, this happened last year. They had a bunch of them in May and now we're looking at late August within a day or so when the uh, storm started rolling in and the rain started rolling in. Just there's just three babies that showed up so it's kind of wild and crazy but i love it uh it's it's so exciting and it makes me feel so much better even more confident that big joe did did his thing and so you know you kind of go back to think of what doc said maybe they didn't accept him at first and maybe these uh females these cows were coming in heat late which also pushed the calving season back for those three a little later. And maybe they, they had to get to know Big Joe a little bit and, you know, go out on a couple dates and, and you know, get a feel for things and warm up to him. And obviously things happened and we have some late babies. Timing is not great. The weather has cooled down, which is better than having a baby in the middle of a uh, drought in the middle of July. So sometimes things just work out. You know, you just work hard and you do what you think is best for them and then good things happen. So here's a little side note for you. We've got little Quapaw, I'll call her a little Quapaw heifer. She's not as big as the other two Quapaws. She is showing signs of being pregnant as well. So that is a very good thing. She's the one last year I came out here and I pulled out in the pasture and I saw uh, a cow with a baby and I was looking I was like oh my gosh that's little Quapa I didn't think she was pregnant she completely surprised me and she's a that was her first time to ever have a calf now again I think she's part of these late cycled females of the summer of 21 and uh, I think she's gonna have a baby soon so we'll keep you updated with that um, and hopefully she has a baby and everything's just fine and here's the other happy and exciting thing Kevin and I both think, and I don't like to get my hopes up too much, but we do think that Eleanor may be pregnant. She is showing some good signs of, of being pregnant. So if Eleanor has a baby and the little quapaw heifer has a baby, I think we'll be eight for eight, and that'll be the first time ever. So that is very exciting. And um, that's whenever you know that some of your work and your management strategies, you kind of question yourself, am I doing the right thing? Um, but hopefully it has paid off. And if we're eight for eight, that is, that's really, really good. That's what you want. 
Hey, you guys at Cross Timber just do a little different. You, why have yeah. one red dog season when you can have two yeah, red dog that's seasons? Right. So we can keep you guys entertained. <laughs> they keep me entertained for sure. You got Princess over here. Yeah, there's Princess. I, I remember Eleanor, well, her first baby is up here. I'm selling him as a breeding bull. If, if anybody needs a breeding bull, he's two years old and he looks really good actually. Um, he's really good looking he, bull. He's turned out to be really good. So uh, I'm keeping him to sell for, as a breeding bull. So he's out of Dunbar and our princess here. If anybody's interested, you can email me. But uh, princess missed having a calf last year. So she had her little bull in 20, didn't have one last year, and, and is peeing right now, but <laughs> hasn't had a baby uh, for 22 yet. So we need princess here to have a baby. We know that uh, because, they had, because they had the babies within a day or two ago, you always try to give them a little bit of distance and they they kind of keep themselves away so uh but princess here she knows what she's doing she knows when they leave she has an opportunity to get some cubes so i actually bought her some cubes this time we're going to give her some and uh just take a look at her and hang out with her Well, just by looking at her, I'd like to get her up close because <laughs> it's just funny hanging out with her. But just by looking at her, she's starting to get a little bit of bag, and um, her woman stuff is showing uh, showing a little bit. So I think she is a very late bloomer. She obviously cycled late, and I. Uh, I just hope that she's pregnant. She is showing signs of it, but she looks she looks good. She's healthy, and you know, the woman stuff. That's a technical YouTube term, right? Yeah, woman stuff. I guess I, the, I don't know how you put it. It's just a, <laughs> no, you have to on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. YouTube. Will, it's just the most polite terms uh, to say, but you know, that's just part of it. Uh, every animal shows signs of of having a a baby calving and so that's one of the things that we look at when we come out here is when we know that they're getting close it's an easy way of telling and like I said earlier when Cole and I came out here two weeks ago and was checking them and whatnot I noticed a couple of cows surprised me I said she looks pregnant and she looks pregnant just by looking at their woman parts and there's always two there's two or three signs one the belly obviously looks bigger that's pretty obvious just like um, I'd say a woman you can tell and then uh, also their woman parts and then their udder bison udders are really hard to see because they're they're really tucked up in there now, like a cow a cow has a big udder and it sags down um, kind of low bison udder is kind of sucked up pretty pretty high up in them just that's just the leanness of this animal and so not that they don't have a lot of milk it's just their udder is not that big so those are the three things that we look at and and uh i was just happy to see those signs and then the next thing you know kevin's sending me a uh a, a video and calling me so i guess the weather got him going which is good but this would make my year uh, all the drought stuff we've gone through and just dealing with all that and, and the struggles from from the drought this historical drought we've had in murray county uh if she had a baby would just pretty much kind of wash all that away <laughs> probably not going to be a very big calf but <laughs> if she had one i don't care you'd rather have a calf now than no calves at all and you'd rather have a miniature calf yeah. than no calves at all <laughs> we have a miniature calf she's special but her bull is He's so much bigger than her already. He's only two. Yeah, looking at him, you would not think that he came from her. No. Mm -mm. Yep, so that, that Dunbar's coming through in him, so. Maybe it's like people skipped a generation. Yeah, I know. I know. And maybe because she is so, she is just a little bit smaller that, I don't know, maybe she needed that time of that year of recovery. I don't know. You know, nature kind of takes care of itself, but. 
need to go look at that tire. Yeah. Dunbar toy. Big Joe, big Thirty-two. Uh -huh. Boss. Come on, Elsa. Oh, I still have this on. I didn't realize that. All right, guys, now we're back at the Ponderosa. We just got back from the Dunbar herd, and uh, that is, a, like I said, all the bad things that's been going on this summer with the drought and the conditions we've been dealing with, to see those three babies out there unexpectedly is very awesome. And uh, that's awesome for our family, and it makes us feel a whole lot better about things and about a big Joe. Um, so, like I said, we are back here at the Ponderosa now, and, um, we are going to take a look at what I'm doing. I was trying to finish uh, the office. I'll give you little updates here and there on the office, but we're getting very, very close. I did get it uh, spray foam insulated. I'm gonna show you guys that today also and uh, kind of give you an update on everything. So let's go take a look at the office and see how it's going. Come here, Elsa. Come here. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Hmm? Oh, you get found a scratch. <laughs> oh, okay, let's feed you. Look at all the chickens. <laughs> okay. Breakfast, she says. I, I need breakfast. <laughs> oh, Brooks would be happy. It's okay. Not so chicken anymore. Yeah, a little bronze nugget Not now. so chicks, yeah. Instead of a golden nugget. She's pretty. Vice quit, Elsa. I'm not giving you the chicken. Maybe these uh, chickens have learned their lesson. Nope, they haven't. Here they come. Elsa, I thought Elsa had taught them a lesson, but... Here they come, creeping in here. I think this is the one right here she uh, got after. <laughs> you hear that? It's a little rooster. Six of those babies. Oh, there you are. So here is uh, some of the spray foam that we got had done. So this is obviously interior wall of the barn. Here is the lead into the office. But one of the reasons we went ahead and did this is because uh, eventually in the future, I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, close this little third in. It's like a 20 by 60 
portion of this barn, which I've told you uh, about doing that in the future and, and maybe doing um, possibly events and stuff like that. Um, we would cut all this off and make a big room, whatever. So we did ahead and spray and foamed it. We didn't want to lose the heat and the air from the office. So let's go take a look at the office. So here we were able to get, when these barns were built, or when this one was specifically built, they laid the sea purlin like this, and um, you lose eight inches because the sea purlin is laid this way. Now structurally, I don't know what's better, but because of that, we were able to put eight inches of spray foam here on the west wall, which is gonna get a lot of the sunlight, a lot of the wind, rain, and all that cold air comes from the north and it'll hit this west side. So we got eight inches of spray foam here. And then Russell and I put these one by four slats in, or lats, whatever you call them, or verticals, or uprights in, and then uh, we'll do drywall right here. So we'll do drywall here, drywall. We, we were able to get uh, two to three inches of spray foam in the ceiling. And then we're gonna do storage up top, uh, just just because you always need more space for stuff. And then we're gonna do drywall ceiling, drywall side. I like this because this is the original part of the barn. And so what I just showed you is the inside that we got spray foam. So I like this uh, exposed original sheet metal of the barn because this used to be the loft, basically a third of the loft. We still have 40 foot left of the loft. And then over here, we're gonna put um, one of my favorite things. We're gonna put cedar on this wall over here. Um, so you, you can't see it very good, but see the sea purlin, this is new. This is what Sam did for me, one of my former students. The sea purlin is turned this way now. Instead of laying horizontal, it's vertical, it's upright. And so we have a little screw to it that way, which you don't lose that eight inches you're only losing a couple inches so we got spray foam in there two to three inches of spray foam there but one of my favorite things is we're going to put up cedar right here so it's one by six by eight cedar boards they're almost i think they're called fence pickets uh, but i love the color of them love the texture and and look it gives it a nice rustic look and so we'll put them on there as a faux sort of wall just to create some contrast in here and uh, I love putting cedar up and I've done it in a lot of our cabins too and uh, it just makes everything look better so that's an update on the office where we're at I'll tell you after about an hour of being in here after he spray foamed it it I could tell the difference big time already uh, it's a little humid today because we finally started getting some rain but um it's made a huge difference and the noise is not near as loud at all. So, uh, so far I like the spray foam. And then what we'll do in the future is we will put an AC unit right here on this wall as well. It'll put a mini split for a matter of fact is what it's called. So pretty much we'll do the ceiling for storage, get our two by fours on this, uh, our vertical runs here and then drywall and tape, duck, paint, texture, all that and then uh, cedar walls. Then the last thing is, is we'll um, have my concrete guys that did this come back through and we'll get this all cleaned up and they're gonna pour an acid on it and create a pretty cool uh, finish to the concrete. I'm gonna leave it at this natural concrete look with a seal on it. So excited for that and then we'll be ready to move stuff in, so. Then more fence. Yeah, back to fencing, yeah. Back to Vincent.